My name is Mr. Eric, and I'm the Literacy Lab Coordinator here at Girls Inc. of Orange County. My pronouns are he and him, and today we are reading a book called The Giant Jam Sandwich! <laughs> Whom of you loves jelly but hates those pesky wasps? <laughs> well then, the story of The Giant Jam Sandwich is the story for you. It's a story about a community that becomes united for one cause. It reminds me of when people all over the world come together to help. Maybe to fight a sickness, or to help their community, or maybe to support girls' rights. The story of the giant jam sandwich was imagined and illustrated by a man named John Vernon Lord. But the story itself was turned into a giant poem with a ton of verses by a woman named Janet Burroway. It's a fictional story. You know, fiction means the story's not real, but it's make-believe. This story is in a paperback book form, which means it doesn't have a hard cover. Look. <laughs> now, do you know the anatomy of a book? Like, what's this part called? Front cover, good job. Hmm, what's this part called? Back cover, yep. This part? The spine, just like that spine up and down your back holds together your bones. This holds together all these pages. What's next? Hmm, inside. Let's check it out. The title page. This title page is pretty simple. Some of them are very elaborate. Hmm. Another title page with the illustrator and the author. And this is called the dedication. On it, it says, for Alexander and Jonathan. I don't know who those people were, but they must have been worth a dedication of a book. Are you ready to read the giant jam sandwich? I am. Let's do this. One hot summer in itching down, four million wasps flew into town. They drove the picnickers away. They chased the farmers from their hay. They stung Lord Swell on his fat, bald pate. And then they dived and hummed and buzzed and ate. Do you love wasps as much as I do? <laughs> and the noisy, nasty nuisance grew till the villagers cried, What can we do? So they called a meeting in the village hall, and Mayor Muddlenut asked them all, What can we do? And they said, Good question. But nobody had a good suggestion, unfortunately. <clears throat> then, Bap the baker leaped to his feet and cried, What do wasps like best to eat? Strawberry jam! Now wait a minute. If we made a giant sandwich, we could trap them in it. The gentlemen cheered and the ladies squealed. And Farmer Seed said, Here's my field. <laughs> Bap gave instructions for the making of the dough. Mix flour from above and yeast from below. Salt from the seaside, water from the spout. Now thump it and bang it and bang it about. While they were working and working hard, some more made a tablecloth out in the yard. You see that tablecloth way out in the back? Man, they're taking a lot of cloth to make that, and that's an awful lot of dough inside this warehouse. Who's ever made bread? Have you made bread? Or kind of baking items? It's pretty fun. You should try it. I have. When they were done, the dough was left to rise, till the loaf was a mountain in shape and size. They hitched it up with a bit of a fuss. The tractors, cars, and the village bus, and took it to the oven, they had made on a hill 50 cookers in an old brick mill. Wow. Pretty heavy, big old chunk of dough. For hours and hours, they let it cook. It swelled inside till the windows shook. It was piping hot when they took it out, and the villagers raised a mighty shout! Woohoo! Isn't it crusty? Aren't we clever? But the wasps were just as bad as ever. The loaf was left to cool, and then 
The people watched while six strong men took a great big saw and sliced right through. Everybody clapped, and they cut slice too. Do you see how everybody's involved? The whole town, the whole community came together to fight this one big cause. Sounds like something we're trying to do with this virus thing going around, that nasty virus. I want to just get rid of it like a wasp. Here we go. The village bus, they all agreed, would spoil the fields of farmer seed. So eight fine horses pulled the bread to where the picnic cloth was spread. Well, that was nice they were thinking of his field. A truck drew up and dumped out the butter and spread it out with the flap and flutter, spoons and spades slap and slam, and they did the same with that strawberry jam. Wow, that's a lot of strawberry jam. Looks like the wasps are getting a little nosy. Meanwhile, high above the field, six flying machines whirred and wheeled, ready for the wasps to take that bait. And then there was nothing to do but wait. Oh, do you see Bap the Baker way down in the field and that big old jam? Oh, look it! It looks like I see the wasps are coming towards that jam sandwich. Suddenly the sky was humming! All four million wasps were coming. They smelled that jam, they dived and struck. And they ate so much they all got stuck. The other slice came down, cursed splat, on top of the wasps. And that was that. There were only three that got away. And where they are now, I cannot say. Hopefully far, far away. Maybe they found some hay. Hey, <laughs> rhymed a little bit. All right, next. But they never came back to Itching Down, which is not a waspish sort of town, but a very nice place to dance and play. And that's what the villagers did that day. What a party they're having. Look at that dancing and twirling and look up in the distance you see the birds taking away the sandwich in the tablecloth. What became of the sandwich? Well, in itching down they like to tell how the birds flew off with it in their beaks and had a feast for a hundred weeks. That's a long time, a hundred weeks. Must be a lot of sandwich to eat. So I hope you enjoyed our literacy lab reading of the giant jam sandwich. In all times, try to be a good neighbor and a friend. Find ways you can have unity with people for good reasons. We might all be different with different ideas, but we can work together. And when we're together, we're stronger. Thanks for visiting, and don't forget, you are strong, smart, and bold. See you later, goodbye.